More than ever, having a good connection to the internet whilst away in your caravan or motorhome is to many people desirable and to some, borderline essential. So in this video, I'm going to run through some strategies and products to ensure that you're more likely to have an internet connection wherever you are. Hi, it's Dave T here, and we've been caravan in the UK and Europe for the better part of 20 years. Over that time, being able to access the internet has gone from inconsequential to, for some people at least, borderline essential. Whether it's for watching Netflix, staying in touch with family, or dealing with emergency situations such as finding spare parts to fix a problem, let's face it, the internet has just become a bigger part of our life than before. So with that said, let's first get some terminology out of the way and explain what the issues we need to overcome to be able to access the internet whilst away from home. Ultimately, we are going to be talking about installing a Wi-Fi system. So let's start with the terminology. I often hear people referring to Wi-Fi when talking about having a connection to the internet. And it's really important to understand that they aren't exactly the same thing. So in terms of the name, it's commonly believed that Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity, but actually Wi-Fi is just shorthand for the IEEE 802.11x wireless standards, which really doesn't help at all. So let me explain what it actually is. Now Wi-Fi is a radio-based technology that allows computers and other devices to communicate at relatively high speeds over a short distance. And the important part of that statement is the short distance. Wi-Fi is limited to about 300 feet outdoors and about 150 feet indoors. But in reality, you'll be lucky to get that kind of range. It's often a lot shorter. Most people have Wi-Fi at home and it's typically to connect computers, phones, tablets and everything else to the broadband router. And it's the broadband router that is connected to the internet, usually by a plugged in connection. So the only purpose of Wi-Fi is to enable you to use your devices anywhere in the house without having to run cables from the router to other rooms. Now, if we think about our caravan or motorhome sitting in a field, you can hopefully see that just having Wi-Fi is only part of the solution because we still need a connection to the actual internet, which is where, assuming you aren't going to ask BT to come and lay a cable to your caravan, mobile signals come in. Now when talking about mobile phones, they use a different wireless standard to connect to the internet by radio signals to a network of phone masts which cover most of the country. The masts are erected and maintained by different telephone companies and while some of them share masts, this means that your ability to connect will depend on the four main factors. The first is network coverage by your particular provider. So for example, if you're on an O2 contract and O2 does not have a mast near you, then you will get a poor signal or none at all. The second is how close you are to the nearest mast that your operator uses and what is between you and the mast. Things like trees, buildings and hills can all reduce the signal. The third thing to take into account is what level of service the local mast provides. In a city, this could be high speed 4 or 5G internet connections. In a rural area, it could be slower, more basic service. Next is where the antenna for your device, typically your phone, physically is, since objects in or around the phone will impact the signal. Most obvious of these is if you're inside a vehicle or a caravan, or if there are other electronic devices nearby. Now from this point of view, I performed a simple download speed test at our storage yard where my O2 provider's coverage is not great, and inside the van I managed a download speed of 4.2 meg. But by simply stepping outside the van it went up to 5.97 meg. So almost a 2 meg increase and in percentage terms about 40%. So as you can see there are a lot of things to stop you getting a good signal but as I'll explain there are approaches to overcome most of these. So a little word about the types of mobile signal which are known by their generation numbers of 1G, 2G, 3G and so on up to the current latest standard which is 5G. As you'll probably guess 5G is better than 4G and so on. The main difference between each generation is how much data can be sent and how quickly. If you want to download a movie or upload all of your holiday photos, then a 4G signal is going to be much better than a 3G one. 5G is by far the fastest system, but it only started to be rolled out worldwide in 2019 and requires all masks to be upgraded and new masks added to get the full benefit. As such, 5G coverage is limited, especially outside of built-up areas, which is of course where you are most likely to be camping. 
it's worth saying that a 5G device such as a mobile phone or the Wi-Fi hotspots we're going to talk about are backwards compatible. This means that if you purchase a 5G device then you will still get a signal in areas that only have 4G, 3G or less. But it may well not be worth the additional cost of 5G if you are unlikely to often be staying in a 5G area. So now we understand the problems, let's jump right to the solutions, starting with the simplest and lowest cost option, which is just simply using your mobile phone. I'm going to use the example of trying to connect a laptop to the internet whilst in a caravan. But the same would apply to a tablet, a smart TV, security cameras or any other devices that need an internet connection. Pretty much all modern mobile phones can be used as a Wi-Fi hotspot, also known as tethering. This enables the mobile phone to share its mobile internet connection via Wi-Fi by turning itself into a Wi-Fi hotspot that, in our example, the laptop can connect to. Here on my Android phone, I've gone into settings and then into connections, tapped on the mobile hotspot and tethering, long pressed on mobile hotspot to see the settings, and I can then change the hotspot or network name and more importantly, change or make a note of the password. I can then turn on the mobile hotspot and on the laptop I can see the phone as a Wi-Fi connection. And lo and behold I can now browse the internet but let's take a look at a set of potential issues I ran through earlier and see how likely this is to work out well in the real world. Now in terms of network coverage I'm only okay if my phone's provider has coverage where I am staying. Effectively a one in four chance of coverage. My phone is still inside the caravan, so if I'm in a low signal area, it will likely tip the balance to be unusable. For more permanent connections, such as a smart TV, this setup will only work while my phone is here. So for example, my wife would have to connect the TV to her phone if I wasn't there and so on. There are a few hacks to improve this option's effectiveness. For example, my wife and I are on different mobile providers, so we could use the phone with the best signal. But you can imagine how well that goes down if I want to use my wife's phone to tether my laptop to the internet. I could of course swap the SIM card in my phone to get coverage by a different provider but then my phone number changes and that would be really inconvenient. There are also of course some mobile phones which have dual SIMs so you could get a second SIM for your phone if you have that option on your phone. Extended use of a phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot can drain the battery and cause heat buildup in the device which may affect its longevity. If you need to link multiple devices simultaneously then the connection speed also may suffer. So the next option is to find an alternative device to the mobile phone which is where mobile Wi-Fi hotspots come in. Now you can buy these for as little as £40, but you will of course need to also purchase a SIM card and some form of mobile phone service. They are pretty easy to set up, basically just a case of registering and setting up the mobile service, the same as on a phone, and then using the Wi-Fi connection details to connect the same as with a home Wi-Fi router. Lower cost devices may struggle more when connecting multiple devices. They can have smaller batteries and of course potentially be lower quality overall. If you intend to use a VPN service for improved privacy or to spoof your location and use services such as Netflix when traveling abroad, then you should also confirm if the device directly supports VPNs. In terms of our list of potential issues, the hotspot option should help with the network coverage, but more on that in a moment. The Wi-Fi hotspot is still inside the van or motorhome, which will reduce the signal, especially in low signal strength areas. But it is also more convenient than using your phone since it can remain plugged into power and any devices in the van just need to be connected to that hotspot. But some models may struggle with multiple devices connecting. A word of warning in terms of network coverage as you will only benefit if you ensure that you use a different provider from your mobile phone. If you have for example a family contract and put everything on the same provider then you'll get little advantage. With different providers for each device you will have two or even three chances of being with the right provider wherever you are. It's worth noting that you could even connect your mobile to the hotspot enabling you to use your mobile phone when your mobile phone provider has no coverage. Now many of these devices have built-in batteries so you could for example pop it in a waterproof box and place it on the roof of the van but that wouldn't be a permanent solution. The third and final option is to resolve the issue of the mobile phone signal having to penetrate the body of the caravan or motorhome and have something more permanently available. 
This would involve adding an external antenna and usually fixing the Wi-Fi hotspot device, more often referred to as a router in these types of setups. There are several standard kits available which include all of the components required to do this and we actually went for the new AMR994X from Avtex and I'll be doing a full review and installation video of that. If we look at our original list of connection challenges, this approach solves the most issues. Many units like the Avtex have dual SIM sockets, meaning that potentially, at a cost, you can have two additional providers to provide improved coverage. In terms of signal strength, the antennas are usually larger and have dual antennas built in. And they are permanent and therefore always available, providing there is power and a signal so perfect for fixed items such as smart TVs or security devices like cameras. Now some Wi-Fi hotspots do support external antennas for the mobile signal, so bear that in mind if you initially plan to just go down the Wi-Fi hotspot route, paying a bit more for a hotspot that supports external 4G or 5G antennas will future-proof you somewhat. Usually the antenna is permanently fitted to the van, which will typically involve drilling holes in the roof or body of the van. Now there are also kits that have temporary antennas that you can install when on site. An antenna can improve signal strength in three ways. The first that is now, of course, not inside the box of the caravan or motorhome. The second is that, from a design perspective, they require less compromises in terms of size and shape. And thirdly, it will almost certainly be higher up than usual. All things considered, the higher an antenna, the more likely the signal will have a clear path between it and the nearest mobile network mast. Now, some of you may well have noticed that I am missing out on a possibly important category, which is satellite-based internet. Now, these systems communicate with satellites that orbit around the Earth and should, in theory at least, pretty much always have a signal. They provide download speeds of between 25 and 220 meg, though the upload speed is less impressive. The most well-known system is Starlink, and bearing in mind the equipment cost is around £450, and the monthly cost is currently about £75 per month, I've kind of put these in the specialist category and focused more on the traditional and affordable options for this video, and satellite communication is probably something that deserves a video of its own at some point, maybe. Other than that, back to the main video. Now inevitably you're going to be asking yourself, is all of this worth it? Now the mobile 4G Wi-Fi solution I fitted to our caravan cost about £300 and then of course the cost of the additional mobile contract needs to be added, which you could estimate at being about £120 or so per year if you're using it for the entire year or perhaps less if you go for pay as you go and purely use it during the months that you're using the van. Now, if you want to go for a 5G system, then the prices can be considerably higher, and from the research I've done, the results are also a lot more varied. 5G is definitely faster and more advanced, but the network is still limited in many parts of the UK, particularly rurally. So the investment may not be worth it, depending on where you stay. There are cheaper options available, especially if you want to purchase the antenna and Wi-Fi router separately. That could reduce the upfront cost by more than half, However, it's worth bearing in mind that there's a wide range in quality and reliability of the products on the market. Either way, it's a fairly significant cost for what may be, for many, a luxury. Now, we tend to stay at more remote locations and have certainly had issues where signal was poor, especially on certain networks. Having an alternative service provider as a backup would have made life easier. Now, we are also on the brink of changing from our old habit of watching a DVD box sets and instead using a streaming service. So we would save some money on DVDs, but that's just us. One of the reasons we decided to install Wi-Fi is because we are planning a fairly long trip to Europe to an unusual destination for UK caravans at least, and subscribe to hear about that trip. And with the caravan Wi-Fi, we will be able to purchase a local SIM card when we are there and use this for our internet access. The roaming charges could therefore be another saving. The other more tangible reason for fitting a permanent Wi-Fi system is that it opens up the possibility of other remote facilities. For example, fitting a security camera that can be remotely monitored is now easy to do. Similarly, a sensor that detects movement and can notify you, either when the van is in storage or on site, is another easy thing to do, and I'm planning several videos to cover these kind of projects. Compared to the cost of many of the remote alarm and tracker systems available on the market, this could make financial sense if you have that requirement. Either way, I hope you found this video of interest and hopefully it has given you a better understanding of the technology and issues involved. 
If you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit that like button as it really does help the channel. And if you are interested in seeing more of my videos, especially that unusual European ship, then please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. But most of all, thanks for watching.